I'd like to welcome you to the Global Alliance of NGOs for Road Safety six and last webinar in the series of our six webinars called Let's Get Minimum Three Star Roads by 2020. We've created these webinars because many of our NGOs are unsure how they can contribute meaningfully to reducing fatalities on our roads and they would like to learn more about the star rating concept and the three star coalition specifically. We hope that these webinars have inspired you to promote better roads in your country and have provided you with specific ideas on how you can get started or build on what you already do when you advocate in your country. As you know, our presenters have spent a lot of time creating these webinars and we would like to know if you have any clarifying questions or there are any parts that you would like to know more about. We have created a feedback form and you can see it on this slide. You can also find the feedback form on our website. You go to Road Safety NGOs, under Activities and under Capacity Building, you'll find our Empowerment Program where you find the training sessions and this question and feedback form. And overall, we have a lot of offerings over the coming months, so please check this website out on a frequent basis. This is the sixth and last webinar of our series that we have called Let's Get Minimum Three Star Roads by 2020. Today we'll focus on how you can be involved in advocacy with the World Bank. In this webinar we have two presenters. Keith Johnson from the Three Star Coalition will take us through the why and how when working with the World Bank on Three Star Roads. And Daniel Mwamba, our Alliance member in Zambia, from Zambia Road Safety Trust will tell us how he prepared letters and phone calls and follow-ups um, and the outcome of his efforts when promoting three-star roads in Zambia. Welcome and thank you to both of you. Keith, please uh, start with giving us an overview. The title of this webinar is Working with your World Bank Executive Director to Advocate for Three-Star or Better Roads. My name is Keith Johnson. I'm the Director of Advocacy at Fund for Global Health, a coordinating member of the Three Star Coalition. A little later in the webinar, we'll also hear from Daniel Mwamba, who has been uh, from Zambia, who has been especially persistent in reach out, reaching out to his Executive Director's office. Here's what we'll cover in this webinar. Why well, work with the World Bank on road safety? Who do you contact? the executive director and staff representing your country. How do you prepare to be an effective advocate? And we'll look at ways to communicate with the executive director and their staff. By the way, we'll refer to executive directors as EDs in this webinar. <clears throat> we'll hear Daniel Mwamba's experience so far and look at what we can learn from that. Why are we working with the World Bank? The World Bank is the largest aid financer of road construction averaging $5 billion a year. Currently, the bank does not require minimum safety levels on the roads it finances. We are urging the bank to adopt three-star or better safety ratings on all road projects. The bank is a leader in the development field and its policies are often adopted as best practice by other agencies. Next. The International Road Assessment Program recently did a study to estimate the difference it would make if the World Bank adopted the three-star minimum standard for the next 15 years, 2016 to 2030. The lower number represents a very conservative estimate, and it's assumed that roads last for 20 years. <clears throat> the paper also concluded that the savings in crash costs avoided would be huge, 95 to $325 billion over the 20-year life of the roads. One of these 25 powerful people represents your country. You can move them to make a big difference for road safety. This board reviews and approves all bank projects, so their views are critical in determining bank safety. Prior to approval, they have a chance to ask questions about a project. We would like them to start asking to be notified in advance of board approval whether road projects have been star rated, and we would like them to express their preference that road projects receive three star or better ratings. 
So this is where we go to the Google search page. Well, I will walk you through a process of finding the information you need. First, you would Google World Bank Board of Directors. And the first search result is where you want to go. On this page, this is the home page of the Board of Directors. On this page, select your country in the by country box in the upper right. And we're going to use Zambia as an example. Yeah, and you see the by country box in the upper right there? Oh, yeah, sure. Under, there we go. We're going to select Zambia. So here's the home page for the executive director representing Zambia, Mr. LaRose. He also represents 21 other African countries. Uh, when we start communicating with him, we're going to start by emailing uh, him himself, Mr. LaRose, but it's unlikely we'll get a direct response from him, at least at first, so we also want to know who's on his staff. So uh, we're going to look back up to the top of the page there, Lata. Mm -hmm. Back up to the top there. There we go. Overview in the upper left corner. Yeah, there we go. Click on Overview and then click on Staff. Here we see who's on his staff. Um, we're looking for any staff member who represents or is from our country. We're also looking, we're also interested in anyone who is responsible for infrastructure or transport projects. You will copy these people on your initial email to the ED and target them for follow-up. For Zambia, we find, uh, scrolling down, or actually I guess scrolling up a little bit, uh, we're looking, f there's Chola Malambo at the bottom of the screen at this point, and he is from Zambia and ever represents Zambia. So he would be a key person to copy on your, on your initial email. Uh, a little three three positions up. You see Felike Mambo, Mamo rather, <clears throat> who is responsible for infrastructure projects. So he would be a good person to copy on your initial email as well. The level of information about staff varies from ED to ED. They may or may not have phone numbers, email addresses, or lists of responsibilities. If responsibilities and contact information are not given on the staff page, call or email the office in Washington to ask who might be from your country and who is responsible for overseeing transport projects. So let's go back up to the top of the page, this page, in order to get the phone number. There in the upper left corner, you see the contact information for their office. So you could call that, those, that number or email that number and ask those questions. Yeah, that's right, in Washington, D.C. Washington, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, and that's where the staff is, is going to be, uh, where that we want to contact. <clears throat> so make sure to get their email addresses and phone numbers when you inquire, if they're not already on the website. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. How do you prepare for advocacy? Listen to webinar number one in this, in, the, in this series on the International Road Assessment Program and get your questions about it answered. We hope to also develop a shorter set of slides that will enable you to make a strong presentation of the star rating system. I encourage you to practice delivering this presentation out loud in preparation for talking with your ED staff. Learning to speak well about the issue and why it's important is your most popular advocacy tool, so practice your pitch. This will probably be the first time your listener has heard about star rating roads for safety, and it's important to make a good first impression. Number two, be ready to talk about the most important safety facts, road safety facts and stories in your country, and what your organization has been doing. This is probably something that you already know how to do. Okay, let's look at ways to communicate now, uh, email, phone, meet in person, possibly have a coalition member represent you. 
In most campaigns, we'll supply you with an email already drafted to get you started. It's best if you can reword it in your own words while keeping the essential information accurate so it doesn't look like a form letter. Be sure to include a paragraph about your organization and its work. Phone call. <clears throat> it's recommended that you call to follow up on your email with a phone call. Have a strong opening line. Using myself as an example, I might say, my name is Keith Johnson with Fund for Global Health, a member of the International Three Star Coalition. I'm following up on my email, requesting your attention to road safety on World Bank projects, specifically setting minimum three star safety standards for all road projects. Unquote. We will provide a draft phone script to get you started, but again, it's best to have it in your own words as much as possible. Most often when you call, you'll get voicemail. So be ready for that and have a brief message ready. It could be the same as your opening line. When I'm doing this, I, if I don't get a response, I call again in a few days. <clears throat> if I get voicemail again, I usually don't leave a second message. I just hang up and try another time. Quite a bit of persistence is usually required communicating with emails and phone calls, as you probably already know. When you do reach someone, it's likely they won't have thought much about road safety and won't have heard of star rating roads for safety. If you don't get very far on your first try, don't be discouraged and leave the door open to come back another time. An in-person meeting. If it's possible to have an in-person meeting, this is the best way to get your message across and gain their commitment. Often, one of the ED staff is from your country. Possibly the ED or alternate ED is as well. Find out if they are coming home in the near future and request to meet with them. Get a group of like-minded advocates to join you. Another possibility is to ask a coalition representative in the U.S. to visit the ED's office in Washington, D.C. on your behalf as a supplement to your efforts after you've reached out yourself. <clears throat> If you do get a meeting, or even on the phone, uh, it's best to keep in mind professional behavior appropriate to the World Bank. Be prepared, be brief. If you don't know an answer, promise to find out and get back to them. Don't guess. Be prompt with follow-up. If you have an appointment, be on time. And don't answer your phone in a meeting. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Daniel Mwamba with the Zambian Road Safety Trust to share his experience. Yeah, my name is the Daniel Mwamba. Um, I'm the chairman of the Zambia Road Safety Trust. Um, the Zambia Road Safety Trust is a leading road safety charity in Zambia. In Zambia, road traffic accidents, injuries, and death represent a very serious and, rap and rapidly worsening public health crisis and traffic accidents are one of the leading causes of serious injuries and death in Zambia, just behind the HIV, AIDS and malaria. The Zambia Road Safe Trust has joined the Three Star Alliance Coalition to raise awareness nationally on the way roads are constructed. In Zambia, over the past five years, our government has spent over US five billion on roads infrastructure and investment. And this will continue in the, in, in the four coming years. Therefore, as the Zambia Road Safety Trust, being part of the Three Star Coalition has enabled us to learn about the, the star ratings, also network with other members and urge the World Bank to adopt at least a three-star rating for all roads users on its road projects. That's, that's slide one. Slide two. Um, as part of the alliance, I start, uh, as part of the, the three-star coalition, I started working with uh, my, my executive director in Zambia. Uh, this is followed up when Keith circulated a template, a template encouraging coalition members to communicate with the World Bank Executive Director. Uh, the template was circulated through the Alliance newsletter, which we, we as a trust, picked it up. Uh, 
through the kiss He helped us to identify our country executive director at the world, Mr. Louis Rene Peter Laroris. And using that template, um, I wrote to Mr. Laroris, who is the ED, and this was on 28th December 2015. After a month of waiting without receiving response from my letter to Mr. Louis, I contacted his office and spoke to Mr. Fileko Mamo, whom you can see in the slide. Um, he's a senior advisor to the executive director and responsible for infrastructure. Mr. Mamo responded that to me by then that he wasn't aware of my email that I sent to the ED. And he helped me by transferring me to the ED's personal assistant. You can see again in the slide. The personal assistant told me that she has not seen the letter either and she asked me to resend it to her. I did that and I waited about a month without receiving a response. I followed up again, I sent another email and copied the ED and also Mr. Mamo. And also after that I followed up another call to Mr. Mamo. Mr. Mamo told me that the right person that can help in this situation is Mr. Chola Milambo, who is a fellow Zambian and advisor to the ED. As you can see now in the photo, you can see the photo of Mr. Chola Mamo on, on the next slide. Can we move to the next slide? It's there. The next, yeah, good, yeah. Um, uh, this, this is Mr. Milambo. I'm from Zambia. He's from Zambia, and he represents us uh, at the World Bank. I called Mr. Milambo and left a message on his voicemail, and he quickly returned my call. And this was the time that now I started making a, what I would call a breakthrough after several months of trying. Uh, Mr. Milambo explained to me about a few important protocols of the World Bank. He said that the executive director, uh, Mr. Laroz, who represents Zambia, uh, reports to the Zambian Minister of Finance. And also, as the Zambian national representing me, and ZRS here, the World Bank, is the first contact person to get through if we want to contact uh, the executive director at the World Bank. He, as an advisor to the ED, is Zambia's voice at the World Bank addressing issues to do with Zambia and as a Zambian. He asked if I know the World Bank transport specialist who is Mr. Just, Justin uh, Ruji uh, and based in Zambian, the Zambian office of the World Bank. I told him that I know Mr. Ruji and had several meetings with him before. Since he had not seen my email requesting Mr. Mr. Rollis, the ED, speak out on behalf of the three star roads, he asked me to send, to send the email immediately and promise that you will consult with the ED about it. This is good because now I have someone in my executive director's office who is engaged with me in the process. So Daniel, the what slide. Did, there's no what not. Yeah. Yes. Now, here are some of the lessons that I learned uh, through this three, month, uh, three to four months trying to contact the World Bank, which might be relevant and help other, other people that would like to do so in the future. First of all, number one, you need to find out who represents your country. So you need to find out uh, from the World Bank uh, website who is the executive director representing your country. 
Number two, you also need to copy your country representative. And for me, it is Mr. Milambo, who is a Zambia under the World Bank, and other relevant staff from the first email to the executive director. This might be Mr. Mamo, who is, a, who is responsible for infrastructure. Then the, the other thing is that you also need to be persistent. As you can see, it has taken me almost three, four months trying to find out the way until I was able to find out the right person to contact. Then lastly, I was also advised that I should be I should be able to meet the officials from the Minister of Finance or even the the Minister of Finance himself because our representative of the ED at the World Bank um, um, uh, is reports to the Minister of Finance in your country. Thanks, Daniel. You're doing some great work there. Um, <clears throat> let's see what we uh, can learn from what you've just told us. Number one, I think, is it's important to find out who represents your country on, on the EDU staff. Uh, that was Daniel's breakthrough here, is getting to uh, Mr. Malumbo. So you should copy the person who represents your country and anyone else who might be relevant on the first email to the ED. Persistence was very important. It took Daniel a few months of follow-up to find someone who would engage with him on the phone. And finally, it may be a good move, especially if you don't seem to be getting anywhere with the ED's office, to meet with officials in your country's Ministry of Finance, because the ED reports to that minister. So in conclusion, why work with the World Bank on road safety? Here's what we covered. Why work with the World Bank on road safety? Learning about the executive director and staff. How do you prepare to be an effective advocate? Ways to communicate with the ED and their staff. And Daniel Mwamba's experience so far and what we can learn from that. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been useful. After you have listened to this webinar and completed the feedback form, Someone will contact you to see if you're interested in doing the necessary homework and contacting your World Bank Executive Director and their staff. If you do, we will stay in touch to offer friendly support to get answers to your questions and share with others in the Three Star Coalition and the Global Alliance what you learn and accomplish. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Daniel and Keith. Uh, here on this slide, you can see uh, a link to an evaluation and question form. Uh, you might have some questions to what you've heard today that you would like to address to either Keith or to Daniel, and you can fill them in on this form. Uh, you can also find that on our website. Uh, otherwise, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to this webinar and to listening to all our webinars. Thank you and have a safe day. <laughs>